What's up, pet people? My name is Alexia, and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, we're going to be going over a little crested gecko care guide that I made. Basically, we're going to be hitting the main steps that I feel like everyone should know in taking care of a crested gecko. That is housing, um, handling, and feeding. Now, the housing, I will be going through little subcategories such as temperature, substrates, uh, humidity, lighting, things like that. For feeding, I'm just going to go over the different things that you can feed your gecko and what I recommend personally. And then on handling, I'm going to go over tips and tricks that I have found work best with my crested gecko. And basically, um, tips that I have also picked up from other gecko owners and or breeders. So, yeah, that's what we're going to go over today and I hope you keep watching. category that we're going to be covering in today's video is housing. In this category I'm going to have three subcategories which are the size of the enclosure, the lighting, temperature and humidity of the enclosure, and then the substrates that can be used in your gecko's enclosure. As far as size goes, it depends on the size and age of your gecko. Something that you need to keep in mind with crested geckos is that they definitely require more height than they do width in their tank. Um, they are the type of creature who like climbing and being up in the air versus being on the ground. It is very rare to see your gecko on the ground at all times. If they are, you probably need to look and make sure that they're not stressed, sick, or injured because a lot of times if they are injured, they will not be able to climb very well and they will probably stay near the bottom of their tank. Whenever you have a gecko that's over four months old, between Four months to one year, you can house them in a 20 gallon long turned upright, or that can be an adult crested gecko's permanent enclosure if you do it well enough. Um, but I recommend having your juvenile to adult crested gecko in a 12 by 12 by 18 as the absolute minimum size for your gecko. I do not recommend anything smaller than that. Um, personally, I have found that Bigger is always better for tank sizes though, so I keep my adult crested gecko rider in a 18 by 18 by 24 tank. He is very happy in it. Um, I found that I like it better too just because it gives him more space and that gives me assurance that he will not be stressed out and that means he will be eating, uh, eating properly and he will also be displaying signs of being a happy little gecko. Um, now for breeding pairs, you can also house them in an 18 by 18 by 24. That's actually the recommended size. I do not recommend anything larger than 18 by 18 by 24 for a crested gecko though, because larger is better, but only to a certain extent. So definitely this is the tank size I recommend and it's what's worked out best for me. So 18 by 18 by 24. Stick with that one. Whenever it comes to the temperature, humidity, and lighting of your crested gecko enclosure, it's, in my opinion, pretty easy to maintain. Um, crested geckos do not require UVB lighting. They are nocturnal, so they will not be out if you have your light on, and they aren't out during the day for the most part anyway. I do have UVB lighting in my tank due to the fact that I have a bioactive vivarium, which means I have live plants in the tank, which do require UVB lighting in order to stay alive. While it's not recommended, well, it's not required, but I do recommend it anyway, because same thing with my snakes, even though it's not required, it won't hurt your reptile. If anything, it'll help them a little bit. I just think a little bit extra treating your pets to a little bit extra UVB will not hurt them. Um, going on to temperature of your crested gecko, a lot of people mess this up. I've noticed on other YouTube videos I've seen or growing up watching videos about crested geckos, a lot of people say that it's okay to have your crested gecko in the lower temperatures, like mid-60s. That should be your low point for your crested Now, the maximum temperature that you should have for a crested gecko is 75 to eight, uh, 78 degrees. Um, anything above 78 to the 82 range can really, really, really stress out your crested gecko, which, as I said, will make it hard for them to eat, shed, and just function 
it'll just make their life a lot harder if you keep it at a too high of temperature, same way it will if you keep it at a too low temperature. I typically keep my uh, vivarium around 72 to 74 degrees. I try not to go much higher than that, but at night it does drop to about 69, 70 degrees. So that's about the lowest it's ever gotten since I've had him. Um, I do have a hydrometer slash thermometer combination, which is in the upper corner of the tank right here. I will be including a clip later on that will show you where that is. But typically, um, like I said, I monitor my temperatures and humidity very closely to ensure that he's okay. And um, whenever you're talking about humidity, also, as I mentioned, it's a thermometer slash hydrometer, which takes care of your humidity regulation. I have found that um, keeping your tank above... Okay, it's recommended that you keep your tank above 50 at all times and I completely agree with that. They can have drier periods where it can be like the 45 through 50 range. Um, I try not to let it go much lower than that. During the day though they do need a drier period which definitely means let the humidity drop below 70 because if you keep it too high for too long it can cause respiratory infections, fungal infections on your gecko. It can make the shedding more difficult honestly the same way that keeping it too dry can make it more difficult on your gecko. So definitely your low periods can be between 40, 40, 45, and 50. And then your high periods, which should be in the morning and the evening, whenever you miss your tanks, should be around the 70 to 80 percent humidity range. Um, so whenever regulating temperature and humidity, you need to take all of that into um account you need to think about your plants if you have isopods if you have anything else in the uh, enclosure other than your gecko you need to take that into account and basically take care of the tank as a whole so yeah that's all I have to say about the humidity and temperature um, now the substrate which is my last final subcategory that I'm going to go over the substrate can actually help regulate the humidity, so I think they kind of go together, but not quite. Whenever choosing a substrate for your crested gecko, again, you need to think about the age and the size of your gecko. Now, whenever having a bioactive enclosure, you will have bedding such as eco-earth, sphagnum moss, um, bioactive beddings, um, forest floor. It depends on what you choose, but those are the type of beddings that generally go into it. Beddings I do not recommend for a crested gecko are aspen bedding because it just doesn't hold humidity the same way. I do not uh, recommend the cocoa, um, the coconut husk chips. Those are not good either because if your gecko accidentally were to eat one or a small piece of one, it could cause impaction, which makes it extremely hard for them to use the bathroom and it'll stress them out and make them sick overall not a good story so what you need to do is ensure that you have a substrate that maintains humidity um, and it also will not harm your gecko as I said I recommend bioactive bedding or bedding that goes into a bioactive vivarium because it will maintain the humidity that you need and also be the best substrate for your gecko but whatever you do do not <laughs> do not use um, aspen bedding or the cocoa husk fiber mixture or whatever. Don't recommend those at all because it will in the end end up stressing out your gecko, making humidity hard to maintain and just not be the best pick that you could have. Whenever it comes to crested gecko feeding, the easiest and most convenient thing um, and way that I have found to feed my crested geckos is to use a powdered crested gecko diet. Um, they look like this. I use the Pangea brand because my gecko will not eat Rapashi, but Rapashi is another good brand for this. Um, basically, what you do is you take this and you mix it one part powder to two parts water, I believe. Let me double check that. Yes, one, one part powder to two parts water. And you mix it up really good and you put it in a little cup and you put it in your um, feeding dish. Um, you can feed crested geckos live insects. It's recommended to, if you feed powders, to 
at least once a week putting some gut loaded crickets but I went the easy and lazy route and I have the Pangea mix with insects. This makes it extremely easy for me to make sure that Ryder gets all of the food he needs, that he gets everything um, that's good for him and also ensures that I don't have to go routinely buy crickets from the store because that's just a big hassle that I don't like getting into. While crusted geckos can eat only um, powder mixes, like I said before, you need to ensure that they have the one with insects. Feed that one about three times a week. Now, one thing about this that I will say is it is a bit pricey. It is between $12.99 and $17.99 on Amazon, depending if you're a Prime member, depending if... Um, what how many ounces you get I get the half a pound and it is $17.99 um you can make it to where you can routinely order it and get a discount on it if you're gonna be feeding a lot of geckos and you aren't going to be worrying very much about it expiring then I would get more than one at once and subscribe for the monthly shipment out of it but if you only have one crusted gecko like I do, I definitely recommend not subscribing, even though it'll save you like a dollar. It's not worth getting all that gecko food and letting it go to waste. Um, another thing about feeding them is, honestly, you have to make sure that it's mixed properly because if it's too dry, it ends up really crusty and kind of like thick and it makes it hard for them to eat. And they get a lot of their water from their food. Another way they get water is by spraying the glass off the walls. That's the main way they'll drink their water. I recommend also having a water dish in there, but they probably won't use it. Like I said, it's mainly from their food and from misting down the walls. So that's about feeding. It's extremely simple to feed a crested gecko. They do not require a lot in that area. So the final topic that I'm going to be covering in this video is crested gecko handling. I personally believe that crested geckos are some of the easiest lizards to handle. They tolerate moderate to heavy handling um, even at a young age, but it's not recommended to handle them if they're less than three weeks old and especially if you move them, um, you need to let them get acclimated to their enclosure first. So whenever getting a new gecko, it's best to not handle them for the first two weeks so that they do not become stressed. You need to make sure that they have a eating routine in order and that they are doing well in their enclosure before you try to handle them. One thing you need to be careful with though is if you do have a flighty gecko, make sure, if you have any gecko actually, make sure that you are not um, standing and that you do not have it to where he can fall very far. Whenever I handle Ryder, I sit in my bed and have him no higher than this and it's about maybe a 10 inch drop if he were to fall. Nothing too severe because falling from a high, um, from a, falling from a very extreme height will hurt your gecko and it's just not good for them to be up that far. Another thing about handling crusted geckos is if they are stressed or not ready to be held, sometimes they will drop their tail. This is in no way your fault specifically. Crusted geckos are known for dropping their tails at anything. My crested gecko apparently dropped his tail um, randomly at his own reflection is the way that the breeder put it. I found that hilarious because if I were a gecko, that seems like something I would do. I'd get spooked at my own reflection and be like, oh, well, there you go. Um, with Ryder, though, and with all crested geckos, if they drop their tail, they will not grow it back. So they are called frog butts when they drop their tail. I think it's personally adorable. Um, it doesn't really hurt your gecko and it does not mean that they are broken in any way. It just means that they no longer have a tail. And like I said, if they drop the tail while in your hands, do not panic. It's not your fault. Just place them back into the enclosure. Make sure that they are healing properly afterwards and they will be fine. Um, other than that, I genuinely think that we're done. Like. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys learned something from this. Um, and I hope you also give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And yeah, thank you guys for watching.